Hello, I'm Jeffrey Lunn. I want to welcome you to the basic small object photography lecture. And it's mostly about using soft lighting for glass and other shiny objects. Photographing small objects is one of two areas that you can still make a decent living at as a photographer. The small object photography, it extends to Etsy, eBay, all these catalogs that you get during Christmas, um, and a lot of people that have their own websites. They all need good photography. And if you have a very simple setup, you can continue to just make uh, a little bit of side money on small object photography. And if you want to, you know, really hone your skills and get good at it, you could move to a city, principally Chicago or Los Angeles, that does a lot of small object photography you can find work there the other area is uh, events like weddings and also baby pictures and that kind of thing but we'll talk about that in another lecture this type of small photography is called tabletop shooting and there are many techniques for shooting tabletop objects but this module is going to present some very simple approaches uh, and the techniques in this presentation will be sufficient to get the beginner up to speed for basic online purposes. The shooting cube has become a common simple tool for small object photography. It's kind of a pop-up tent that's white. Uh, there's a 24 inch one shown in this photograph. It's white against a white background. <clears throat> Uh, that in itself was a mistake by the manufacturer, but anyway, you can kind of see it. And it folds up into a storage bag. When it's unfolded, it kind of looks like this. You just put it on top of a table and put some lights on the outside of it, or you can shoot outside, and it works quite well. You can shoot straight down or from the side, and it comes with some fabric that is colored fabric that you can put on the inside which is uh, kind of a velveteen and it gets rid of a lot of reflections but you can put any kind of paper uh, or other kind of background inside and uh, you know for a quick easy setup it, it, it works really well this is a very large one here a four foot one and you can see how it folds up and then it fits into a little storage container uh, that's like a nylon envelope now I've built some pretty big ones in my time, uh, so making a shooting cube or a diffusion flat, uh, which is just like one wall, it's fairly simple. This one's constructed with PVC plastic pipe and shower curtain liners, and the cost was about $30 for this one. You can get all of that stuff at a local hardware store. It's real easy to cut with a hacksaw to any length, and then you just uh, make these panels and you uh, put them together with some other plastic fittings that they have. Um, now making a diffusion flat uh, can be as easy as suspending a white shower curtain. Uh, it's a little cramped to photograph in a shower stall, but if you're photographing small objects, it works pretty well. Um, I'm photographing this cello. My wife is asking, why are you taking your cello into the shower? Well, it's for a class, dear. Um, so you can see I have a white shower curtain, I have a light uh, behind that, and then inside I have my uh, cello leaning up against the wall. And this is the kind of quality that you can get when the reflection from the shiny object is in fact the light source. So what we're looking at is the shower curtain with a light behind it and uh, the contrast is a little cranked up here to make it a little more dramatic but you can produce very good quality shots now there's another simple light tent made from a shower curtain liner and an embroidery hoop I got this hoop at Joann's Crafts I think it was about twelve dollars it's pretty big um, and then my wife is just holding it uh, above a shiny ceramic I think it's an eggplant that we um, that we bought and painted so on the left is a shot without the light tent and on the right is uh, something more like a catalog would use because they wouldn't want any background in there they're both acceptable shots 
Uh, it's just that the one on the right is more suitable for a catalog. But it is, it's a little bit boring, but it doesn't have the um, distracting uh, elements that come off of the railing like the one on the left. Uh, so these equipment examples show that you don't need a big investment like the one on the right. Now that's a typical shot. I did that in uh, one of my studios uh, that I've had over the years. I was shooting a, uh, a catalog for pet products. It had 1,200 items. So it was a real good job for me. Uh, there are many clever ways to turn harsh lighting into nice soft lighting for small objects that don't entail a lot of equipment, like these setups on the left with uh, shooting in the shower stall or uh, just having someone hold the light tent for you. Uh, now, taping a shower curtain liner onto a sunny window is a great way to achieve soft lighting, and that's for portraits or uh, other kinds of things. You can just move a table very close to the uh, window where the shower curtain liner is taped up and direct sunlight could be coming in from that window but it would be really softened by the shower curtain liner. Making a soft light setup using a reflector and small light source can be as easy as putting up three sheets of cardboard and a flashlight. You can buy these sheets of foam core at the dollar store uh, they use them for art and they're very inexpensive and then you can just use a flashlight. Now don't point the flashlight at your object. What you do is you point the flashlight at the white reflectors and that creates a large reflection and uh, it would be good to use the light painting technique to move your flashlight around on those white surfaces so allow a long enough exposure like uh, 15 or 20 seconds where you can move that flashlight from one reflector to the other and keep it away from your shiny object. Uh, this is the result of the previous setup using three sheets of cardboard and a flashlight. You know there's some nice highlights on the spout and the right side but a highlight added to the top of the object with a second flashlight would have improved the shot. But this is quite adequate for uh, use on Etsy, eBay, uh, and some commercial catalogs. Um, now the first step is choosing the camera angle and I recommend placing the camera for small objects on the baseline for your first test shot. Now the baseline is achieved by having your camera lens even with the edge of the table. So this makes the product look big and important. So if you look at where my camera is positioned, it's kind of like at the height of the lower third of this tiny little bottle. And then I have a, a light striking uh, the background to create that nice glow. Note how the back edge of the table is very low. You don't really even see the back edge. And this is what we call the baseline. We're not shooting down on the subject. We don't even see the, the back rim of this uh, cute little uh, coffee mug. Now, if you want to show the rear edge of the top of a vessel, you should be slightly higher than the baseline. This is uh, a camera angle that is, you know, it's a couple inches above baseline. And this was done outdoors with uh, three sheets of cardboard. The product is sitting on one sheet and then the other two are just taped to each other. There's no shower curtain line or anything needed because it's in open shade, which is the shadow of a building. And uh, I've been on the road shooting catalog stuff uh, and this has really worked for me. I'll just, you know, get the job. I'll take it out into the parking lot of the company I'm shooting. I'll set up a few of these uh, and I can get through hundreds of objects in a day and they'll be nice and well lit like the one in the upper left. A slightly higher angle is good for showing contents that's spilling out of a jar. This is for a catalog I did for an a import tea company and it was also done outdoors. I had a like a Buddha statue in the background to create some texture. Um, this is a bronze sculpture and it's shot uh, close to the baseline and note how the highlights are placed onto the face to convey a sense of shape. This was actually a studio shot uh, when I first got this bronze 
Um, I did it for a company, but then I decided to buy it because I really liked it. Uh, and you can see that I have a light on the background to create the glow. I have a mirror in the left to uh, bounce some light. And then I have a diffusion material that's a kind of a cloudy uh, liner for a shower. And then I have a spotlight behind that. These are all really tiny little lights. They can be, that could be achieved with LED spotlights. Um, I have a set of these smaller lights that are very very old I like but I could have used LED lights so this is a, a complicated setup uh, now here is a, a very acceptable result although although not as professional that's the one on the right that was achieved uh, with a single flashlight using the light painting technique we covered in an earlier lesson that was just done on my kitchen counter and it's not quite as rich as the studio shot on the left but uh, it's really quite acceptable and very easily done with light painting and a flashlight. This product shot is almost the same setup as the previous shot. Um, uh, when I say the previous shot, I mean this one. It was done on the same day. Uh, this is um, this was done for uh, the, uh, the company called Hello Kitty. They they have a clothing line too. Uh, the strong diffused key light on the left. Uh, and then another light on the background and a small mirror to make a highlight on the lower part of the boot. And you can see that these are very large um, highlights. They're like liquid poured over the subject because the light source is coming through a very large diffusion uh, sheet and that was made by PVC with a shower curtain material stretched over it and without that there would just be harsh little highlights and spotlights and it would make this boot look like it uh, was very cheap. So the proper control of the background is a crucial part of small object and product photography. This glow in the background is created with a simple soft edge spotlight and a flashlight uh, will work very well. You just position it at the right place and then you light the subject with another light that is diffused uh, and there is nothing that is distracting in this shot it's just that glow on the background that is standard procedure for small object photography uh, diffused key light again from the left side a reflector on the right which is just uh, could be a piece of cardboard with tin foil on it or just a white piece of cardboard and the spotlight is pointed at the background again and again this is just another version of soft side lighting that works very very well some of its skittering across the front of this uh, Chinese stamp and so it uh, does give a little texture to it in shooting galleries like this one in Chicago photographers are expected to turn out about 20 quality product shots a day. Uh, I covered this for a magazine and I also worked a week uh, here. It was one of my first jobs out of college uh, and it was a real slave pit but uh, really got me going on how to produce really quick shots for a catalog. Uh, now glassware is a completely different approach and it can be lit in two basic ways. This is called black line lighting and it uses a single spot of light placed behind the subject. So no direct light, none whatsoever, is hitting the glass. It's only hitting the background and we're looking through the glass. This approach is elegant and simple to achieve. A strong flashlight can be pointed at a blank wall for this effect. Again, there's nothing in there that is distracting. Uh, it should be done in a totally dark room. And you'll notice that uh, the edge of the glass is darker, and that's because we're looking through more glass uh, edge on. Uh, we're only looking through the thickness of the glass twice when we see it from the front. We see the front face and the, and the back but on the edge we're seeing through a lot of glass and so that sucks up a lot of light so the thicker the glass the darker those uh, areas are and this is another black line lighting technique so the thicker parts of the glass appear darker and it's just the simplest setup and it, ver it looks very elegant 
for glassware shots. This is a typical setup for black line lighting. Uh, note that a spot of bright light is on the background and it's the only light needed for black line lighting. Uh, black line lighting only works for transparent objects. Even though the glass is the same thickness all the way around, as I said, the sides appear darker because they are viewed edge on. And the, the shot on the left could easily be done uh, against a blank wall and, uh, with someone holding a flashlight and making a spot on the background. Um, and you'll notice that in the finished shot on the right, I'm shooting at the baseline. So in other words, my camera is height is just above the glass base of uh, that vessel. So I'm kind of looking up at the top edge. I see both edges, but uh, the trailing edge is the one that's lower. So it makes the it just makes the product look more important and expensive. Um, these are examples of black line lighting with colored backgrounds, and the last shot is a white line lighting, which we're going to talk about next. So you can change the color of your spotlight, or just tint the photograph to get all kinds of different effects. But the basic rule is the same. You'll also notice that. Uh, I move the spotlight a little bit in each one of those black line examples on the left so it does change the kind of makes the glass look thicker or thinner uh, and I like the one that's almost all the way to the right it has a real nice gradation in the background now this is called white line lighting. In this approach large reflectors appear on the surface of the glass and a dark background is required for this effect. A dark wall that's that's far away from the subject will suffice uh, if there's no other light hitting it. So just a, a any room, you, you know, you have pictures on the walls or something, just take them down, get rid of those nails, and have that background uh, really dark, shoot at night with the lights off, and then you'll sh set up a couple of different reflectors as I'm going to show you. This is too high of a uh, shot for this glassware, um, but uh, it does help to show uh, what surface I'm shooting on. Use this lighting scheme for all subjects with shiny surfaces, not just glassware. Here's a simplified approach to white line lighting, and you can see that I have uh, two uh, two reflectors, actually it's a softbox on the right and a reflector on the left and I'm creating these two highlights that that hit the side of the glassware and uh, they don't uh, appear on the front and that's that's what this shot is. A uh, simplified approach to white line lighting is shown below. I did this the other day. A, a flashlight is shining on the white cardboard and moved around during the 10 second exposure. The light never strikes the subject. We, we saw an earlier shot of this teapot. And so, and you can see the, the flashlight in the upper left. I'm holding it with my hand. So it's about a 15 second exposure and I'm, I'm moving that uh, flashlight all around on that right hand uh, reflector and then I quickly run behind the camera and move it around to the left. And, and this is the uh, um, this is the shot. Up, actually, in the upper left of this teapot, you can kind of see a reflection of me. Now, uh, for a commercial job, I would have uh, this sitting on a piece of white paper or clean white cardboard, so I wouldn't see any of that um, that texture from the tile on my kitchen counter. I would really clean this shot up. Um, so, you know, this isn't up to professional standards, but it will be a good start in understanding the concept. And note that the camera angle is very low. So don't shoot down on your subject for these shiny um, object photographs. Uh, this is the setup for producing a thin highlight on one side of the object and a wide highlight on the other. Uh, so you'll notice that for the thick side of the, the the highlight wants to be pretty big I have the diffusion material and light source moved around to the front and so I'm going to see a big reflection in the object and then uh, for the thin reflection I'm going to be off to the side uh, so the reflector is actually going to be 
behind the object slightly. And um, it, note the width of the highlights on these shots. The shot on the left was done, I did this for a glass manufacturer. They make several different shapes of wine bottles. Uh, so, you know, I didn't need a label for that. And that is done with two um, light sources, two diffusion flats, and they're both uh, behind the object, not directly behind the object, just off to the side. So I get a real nice highlight that is matched. But in the other shots that I did for wineries, you'll see that uh, in the left I have the light source closer to the bottle and it's slightly bigger and brighter and then I have another light source which is just actually a reflector uh, that is also close to the bottle but not as bright and then I also have another light source that's uh, far to the right and uh, behind uh, the the bottle, not directly behind the bottle, so I can't see it with the camera, but it's creating that thin line. So it's actually three highlights that are on those bottles. That's what the winery wanted. Uh, these techniques are the ones I used to photograph the Gibson guitar collection. I did that for a couple of years. A very large softbox above the guitar and small mirrors to create smaller highlights. So I shot the guitars <clears throat> lying on their back and then for the uh, catalog they they uh, you know flipped the photographs so they were standing up. You'll notice that uh, there's no photoshopping in here but I have that beautiful highlight across the headstock that was uh, created by holding a, a thin piece of white reflector above that headstock and uh, you can't see it in the setup in the left but I also had some uh, mirrors in there to light up the keys of the headstock and it just creates these nice pools of light to photograph this very expensive guitar. Um, so here, these are just some other shots that I did uh, for this catalog. Uh, this is a guitar de designer and um, uh, then you know this is a country western kid that, uh, that was pretty famous at the time. So uh, we have a lot of these personality shots in that catalog and I, I was even in one of the shots. So uh, let's review uh, white line lighting and black line lighting. All the way to the left, that's just a flash on camera. That's like the worst lighting you can do for shiny objects. Then number two, that is black line lighting. Very good example of black line lighting. Um, and then white line lighting, that's a uh, you know some broad highlights and then uh, there's another white line lighting the second to the last one that is uh, narrower because the cardboard isn't out front so much it's off to the side and then the last one is that the uh, glassware is sitting on a light table so light is coming up from the bottom and then I have a couple of reflectors on the side this is also very very elegant it makes the base of the glassware pretty bright. That's the only drawback to it. But it's it's particularly nice for faceted glass and cut crystal. Uh, these are examples of some solid glass objects with very light, uh, various lighting schemes. Again, the one in the upper left is just awful. Uh, that was just a ambient light that was on in the room and it's just terrible. Uh, but you can see they're all labeled. Uh, this, the the one in the middle on the top has a fill card to the right and a spotlight, spotlight uh, that's uh, off to the left, but it's been softened. Uh, the standard black lighting is done on the one that's on the top on the right. A very bright light on the background, but this is solid glass. So there's a lot of very dark areas. And then uh, softbox lighting uh, with a fill card on the lower right. So that's white line and then um, the same shot basically I've just uh, done a color shift and then the one that I like the best is lit below with a light table and a fill card and then there's a, uh, a, a very soft light from on top and it's making those wonderful pools of uh, reflections so uh, using a shooting cube is the easiest approach available for tabletop shooting, uh, as I mentioned, it's not very dramatic, but as long as you do an accurate white balance, 
uh, so you are your camera is balanced to the output of your light in this case it's just a very cheap light that I bought at the hardware store um, and I've got my camera set on the tungsten white balance and I can get some pretty good shots uh, now something that's really shiny was this brass bookend I did this uh, uh, as a tutorial for Photoflex, a company that uh, was in business and made these uh, uh, light, um, these shooting boxes. Uh, so moving the light around the outside of the shooting cube creates many different effects and you can experiment with the light placement to suit your specific needs. So I also in the far right hand one I put a, you'll see a black piece of cardboard inside the shooting cube to make an area that was dark so it's subtractive lighting and it actually does help to define uh, that light brass against a white background another easy approach to getting quick and clean product shots is to place a diffused key light above and behind the object and once the key light is in place add reflectors or mirrors to bounce light back into the front of the subject. These reflectors would be you know very close to your camera on either side um, and uh, this product shot of some toiletry uh, there was a, like a gift set is shot from a high angle because we needed to see the contents but then the catalog shot of that uh, coffee mug is at the baseline level and it does have some very nice uh, subtle highlights on that uh, thing so you know this is a uh, it was a studio this is I'm shooting you know millions of these uh, pet products and I've got to make a uh, light tent like on the the one on the right because it's uh, all chrome and very difficult and uh, I ended up having to clean the that photograph up um, I had to put a reflector right below my camera, a really big reflector, to fill in those dark reflections. And then um, that, even though it was went to all that trouble still for that series, I had to do Photoshop. But the ones on the left, they just have a little mirror uh, to reflect light. And wow, I could just go through those bang, 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 shoot uh, you know 30 or 40 of those in a day. Um, and I want to just revisit this. Good results can be achieved in open shade with just a foam core uh, enclosure. So when you look at this, you go, oh, well, I don't have those lights. I can't do that. But here, anybody can do this. You just get out three pieces of white foam core, put them in the shade, get your camera down to the, um, the baseline. And, you know, that upper left shot, that's plenty good for anybody's website. Uh, this is the same lighting cube that I showed earlier. Uh, it's just on a card table and we're in direct sunlight. And it does have a, a nicer little highlight in the upper right of the product. Here it's a little flat and here uh, it has a little more depth. And that shows you how effective those lighting cubes are. So um, note how one side of the object is brighter than the other even though no harsh shadows are evident. I do feel it's important to have some kind of a ratio on your product so it's just not completely flat lit. When you're photographing small objects the absolute worst lighting comes from directly from the camera angle. Of course the obvious terrible lighting would be your flash. So make sure your flash doesn't go off. But also having these reflectors, I mean having these light sources uh, too close to the camera will flatten things out. The light has to come from uh, one side or the other uh, mostly and then reflected from the other side. So light coming at your object from like a 45 degree angle uh, is about right for most things or you can come around and have it at a 90 degree angle like the one on the lower right and then I've just turned the object ever so slightly so light skitters across the surface. Uh, so these are good examples of white line lighting on the left and black line lighting on the right. These are This is the quality that you should be able to get without any problem for your assignment. And your assignment are 
Um, it is two photos using the white line setup. Uh, so that's going to produce a result like the one on the left. Uh, two photos using the black line setup like the one on the right. And two photos of a small object using soft side lighting. Uh, light painting can be used and uh, so they would look something like these. And um, so you could do these outdoors with a light cube or a um, you could use direct sunlight and have a diffusion flat or someone holding up a shower curtain liner. But I don't want to see any junk in the background. I don't want to see leaves or trees or fences or anything. Uh, you need to get a piece of cardboard either black or white or dark brown to put behind the object and make sure that it's far enough away so no shadow is cast. There's no reason with uh, why you can't produce shots of this quality with just pieces of cardboard and a flashlight or the use of a shower curtain liner which you can get at Walmart or just take one down or shoot shoot in your shower uh, stall like I did with that cello shot. Okay, this is a 40 point assignment and five points for each shot and then five points for proper labeling. I wanna see the, uh, um, the shutter speed and f-stop and the ISO on each of these shots. Um, okay, good luck.